today I am uh, eating another kind of uh, classic fast food type food um, from in this part of, of China at least. Uh, I don't know how popular it is. I think it's pretty popular pretty much everywhere in China. Um, it's called Kaoro Banfan. <coughs> so in a previous video, I talked about ban mian, which is uh, some kind of stuff mixed together with noodles. Uh, ban fan, fan means rice. So ban fan is just some kind of thing mixed together with rice <laughs> instead of noodles. Um, <coughs> so usually, so cow ro, ro means meat, and uh, cow can mean barbecued or roasted, usually cooked over a fire. Um, so cow ro is the standard word they use to translate the English word barbecue. Um, but it can also mean all kinds of different uh, roasted meat, basically. Kauro banfan is a dish that has lots of chopped up little pieces of meat uh, with some kind of a sauce. There are, you can get it with tons and tons of different kind of sauces. Um, the one I typically like to get is called... Uh, Mija Kauro. Um, so me literally means secret. Um, and J means like, uh, well, actually, this J might be a different meaning. Um, but J usually means juice. Um, although I think actually this is a different. Um, No, it is juice, yeah. It's the character for juice. Um, I wasn't sure if it... Sometimes They sometimes write it differently. Uh, Mijra. They'll, like, different people use different characters to write the, the same idea. It, it's not really a set-in-stone word. It basically means honey sauce. Um, so uh, it's like a sweet... Uh, it, it Every restaurant has a different... It's like, it's like the secret sauce at every restaurant. Um, so, and actually honey can be me as well. Feng me. Um, so sometimes places will use the character for secret. Sometimes they'll use the character for honey. Um, sometimes they use the ju from juice. Sometimes they use a different ju. So like they'll, they'll write the characters differently, but it almost always is pronounced me And it just means like a sweet sauce. <laughs> Kind of like a barbecue sauce. Like you can see, this has kind of a, a brownish color, color to it. It's, it's a little salty, a little sweet. Um, and um, so that's the sauce I get. There's lots of other sauces you can get. Um, each restaurant ha will have a variety. The restaurant I got from had like five or six different kinds of sauces. You could get a uh, spicy sauce. You could get with like just mayo as a sauce. You can get it with uh, like a black pepper sauce. Um, you can get it with, um, I've seen it done with like a curry type sauce before. Um, it can have pretty much any kind of sauce. It's just with this uh, kauro. This, this uh, kind of meat is basically they've just roasted up some pork and then sat there with some knives and just chopped it up till it's little teeny pieces. Um, and then they'll throw it on. You can get with uh, various vegetables. Most restaurants will let you pick out what you like, maybe three or four different veggies you want on it. Um, so you just get, it's the meat on top of some veggies, on top of some rice. And then it's called ban fan because ban means to mix it together. So... Once you get it, as you can see, I'm just like mixing it all together. Um, so it's not cooked together. It's all cooked. So again, this is a kind of a common theme with uh, really cheap fast food in China is uh, 
the idea you get some kind of a starch, you take some kind of a protein or veggies or something, throw it on top, and then the person who's eating it just takes it and stirs it up real good. Um, so it's all nice and mixed together and not all separated. Um, and so then you just mix it up and it, some people don't mix it up. Some people eat it like little bits of each other, but the typical way to do it is to mix it up. Um, I got, so the, there's a ton of different kinds of veggies you can get with this. Um, I got it with, uh, these are called tudosa. Uh, tudo means potato. Um, and so means long thin strips. So tudosa is just long thin strips of potato. It's basically julienned potato. It's a very common kind of a appetizer dish here or accoutrement for this kind of a a food. Uh, usually they'll have been brined in some salt water, maybe with a bit of cilantro or something. Um, so it's just kind of cooked up. They're, they're usually cooked to a point where they're still kind of crunchy. They're, they're not cooked mushy. Um, they are cooked. It's not like you're eating raw potato, but they're definitely still like, uh, they've got a little bit of a, of a bite to it. So, but they're very small. If you had a bigger chunk of potato and you ate it, you would think, oh, this is undercooked. This isn't cooked enough. But the way they do it with these little strips, it's just kind of a nice crunchy little um, accoutrement you can have on the side of some dish. Uh, the second thing that is uh, another long thin strip of stuff. Uh, this is cucumber, huanghua. So again, su means long strip, so huanghua su. So it's just strips of cucumber. Um, I think this is raw cucumber. Sometimes they'll have cooked it. Sometimes it's raw. Um, in the West, it's pretty unusual to cook stuff with cucumber. We tend to eat cucumber raw, but in uh, at least in the north of China, it's quite common to cook cucumber, either to have it pickled some way. Like there are raw servings of cucumber, but there are a lot of different ways of cooking with cucumber as well. Um, But, oh, that's the potato. I think this is just sliced up julienne uh, raw, raw cucumber. So I get those two to give it a little crunch to the, um, when you're eating it. You know, the rice is pretty mushy. The meat's pretty just kind of, you know, it's not like crunchy bits of meat. It's just kind of standard roasted meat. Um, texture so having the uh, the crunchy potato and the cucumber gives it kind of a snap that when you're eating it there's some some crunchy bits in it uh, I'm gonna try to find the other stuff oh, here here's the other thing this is called uh, dough pea dough is uh, from dofu, which is uh, tofu, and p means skin. So this is like uh, tofu skin. When they they sit out a vat of tofu, it forms a skin on the top, and they peel that off, and then, then people eat that. Um, it also doesn't really have any flavor. It's very good at holding sauce, so it like gets the sauce on it, and then the flavor it takes on the flavor of whatever's it's mixed with, and it has a nice kind of uh, chewy texture to it. It's got, that's its main benefit is just the texture. It's a textural thing. I'm trying to think of a similar texture in um, Western food. It has a, a similar texture like a, um, a very thin piece of fruit leather. I like the kind of chewy consistency of fruit leather. Uh, but usually fruit leather is a little thicker. This is very, very thin. And then the last um, thing I got 
So in Chinese, it's called pei cai. Uh, so cai means uh, vegetable or dish or, or something like that. And pei means to accompany. Um, so anytime you're getting something like this that comes with something on the side, like it's called a pei cai. Um, so like when you order this one, in the description for the, the meat part, you order the meat and it comes with the rice. And then in the description, it says you can order four free pay tai. Basically, just choose choose from, they have a list of like eight or nine. You can choose four that you want and and, um, and to go with your dish. And so the, the four I chose were the, the tofu skin, the potato, the cucumber, and this is... Uh, called, uh, it doesn't really want to focus well, uh, Gandolfu. So, uh, Gandolfu is, uh, dry. Gan means dry. And again, Dolfu means, uh, tofu. So Gandolfu, so, uh, so is strips. So just strips of dried tofu. So they have this process where they put tofu out on, on these, uh, racks that are basically a thin mesh and the tofu dries out on that mesh uh, into sheets of dried tofu. So it's a, it's a little different than the tofu skin, which is a big chunk of tofu and then the skin forms on the top of it. This is the whole tofu that's just made really thin and, and poured out in thin things and it dries into kind of a, a um, chewy consistency similar to um, this is from from uh, more from Japanese cooking they have a thing called tempeh uh, which is not made the same way but it, it's the texture is quite similar to tempeh if you've ever had tempeh um, and I quite like it. Again, it's just a sauce carrier with a bit of a chewy texture to it. It doesn't really have any flavor. Um, the flavor comes from the meat and the sauce they pour on top of the meat. Um, the other stuff is basically just some textures to have along with your meat. But as long as the sauce is good, you mix it all in, it's got a good flavor. It's quite filling and it's really, really cheap. So then I also got a few other items. It's pretty common with uh, this Kauro Banfan to get a, a fried egg, um, just like a standard um, fried egg. That it, if you're doing it at a, 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 this dish is also served in, this is also a Japanese and a Korean dish as well. They do it slightly differently in those places, but it's basically the same dish, just the, by a different name, uh, you know, depending on what language you're speaking, um, and maybe slightly different ingredients based on where you are. Uh, in Korean and Japanese cooking, they're much more willing to have uh, like runny, runny yolk egg. Uh, so those will often have a runny yolk egg on top. Um, this... Chinese version is just a uh, you know hard hard cooked. It's cooked all the way through. Um, Chinese people don't particularly like uh, runny yolks in eggs, but you just put that on top. Eat little bits of egg along with it. Gives it another little extra flavor thing. Again, you're basically just coming up with cheap ways to have flavor and filling this. Um, and the egg has a good bit of protein and it's got a, a nice cooked flavor to it once you fry it up. Uh, the other thing that's pretty common to have with this is a uh, sausage. This is just a, a, so they call this kao chong, the same kao as the kao ro. Just grilled basically. Um, this probably wasn't grilled. Uh, it may have been cooked over a fire or maybe just in an oven or in a pan. I don't, I don't know how they cooked it, but um, it's basically just a hot dog <laughs> that's been grilled up. Uh, flavor's a little different than, say, an American-style hot dog, but it's a pretty standard kind of thing you can get at a, a 
fast food kind of restaurants here in uh, in China, at least in the north of China. And then, so that's those two. The last thing I got. Oh, so uh, this uh, this type type of cooking, cooking something flat in a pan on both sides is called uh, jian. So uh, egg is don. So this is just called jian don. Um, just means like pan fried egg. And the um, the sausage, sausage is called chong. So, kao chong. Roasted sausage. The last thing I got is chicken on a stick. <laughs> So this is called uh, Ji Liu. Um, Liu is another word for a long skinny kind of thing. Um, usually a little wider. So like this is a Liu. Whereas like this is a long strip of something that's called a Su. So there's a bunch of different words for different shapes. Like these are all just words for shapes basically. Um, for long skinny things there's words like Su. There's Tiao. There's... Liu, um, I think those are the main three for a long, thin strip of something. Uh, they each have a slightly different meaning, um, <clears throat> but they all basically mean a long, thin thing. So this one is called Ji Liu, and it's just kind of a, a shitty chicken cutlet kind of thing that's been skewered on a piece of wood and then grilled um, with a little bit of like a seasoning coating on the outside. You can see kind of just it's been marinated in some kind of flavor. It's not particularly good chicken. Just a little cutlet of chicken with some. Uh, they usually call this seasoning uh, our liang Orleans. I don't really know where they got it. Like, there's this concept in China that there's a specific type of chicken called New Orleans chicken. That I've never heard of in America, but everybody in China knows what this is and thinks that it's from New Orleans and calls it our. They don't. They sometimes they they say Xin, which means New Orleans. So uh, New Orleans, or sometimes they just say Orleans, like uh, Our Orleans. So, but I have no idea where they got the idea that this is from New Orleans. It, it, I guarantee you, it's not a New Orleans dish, but. Uh, Everybody in China thinks this specific flavoring that you put on chicken is from New Orleans. So they call it New Orleans chicken. So this seasoning that they've put on this is New Orleans seasoning. But I don't actually know where it comes from. If you ask any, that's the problem is if you ask a Chinese person, they'll tell you it comes from New Orleans. But if you ask any American, they're like, mm, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> So then it's kind of hard to figure out where the actual origin of it is. Um, but it tastes pretty good. It's kind of got a little bit of a spice to it, a little bit salty. Um, a little cumin-y. It's a good flavor. It's just I don't, I don't really know the origin of it. So this is my my kaoru banfan. So like again, this is one of those dishes that, depending on who ordered it or what restaurant they ordered it from, it could be any variety of a bunch of different things. Because just the restaurant I ordered from probably had at least ten, eight, eight or ten different options for the peitai for the vegetable that goes with it, and around eight different sauces you could get. Um, you can also get it with uh, cut up fried chicken as well. So like uh, crispy skin fried chicken chopped up the same way, chopped up the same way, just like this is pork, that's chicken. 
You can get it with chicken. You can get it with pork. You can get a bunch of different sauces. You can get a bunch of different veggies with it. The consistent thing is that it's sauce on meat, on veggies, on rice, and then you mix it all together. Called uh, Kauro Bonfan. Um, um, it's kind of considered a, a pretty trashy food in China. This is this is not like high class food at all. This is uh, definitely kind of trashy. Mm. It could be a street food or just like a restaurant. These are usually like a little hole in the wall restaurant that you're going in like for lunch someday when you you've only got thirty minutes and and a, a bit of cash in your pocket or whatever. <laughs> you haven't got much money or much time, and you just need something to eat. That's what these kind of uh, dishes are. But I quite like it. It's uh, I think it's pretty good food. It's filling. It's uh, pretty delicious and uh, cheap. And I'll leave it at that.